Well, it's been, uh, it was a great week. There's really no no other way to say it. I mean, it started off getting to host Sam Houston, keep that uh, Battle of the Piney Woods rivalry alive, uh, take care of business there, and follow that up with a tough, uh, tough win against Tulsa, and then wrap up the week hosting an SEC school, not something we get to do every day. So it was really fun. We had great crowds the, during the whole time. And winning three matches at home this weekend, uh, you know, we, we like what we saw this past weekend. And I think the positive thing is that there's, there's still more in the tank for this team. So there's still, there's still work to be done. Did you know that, you, or did you contact anybody for the script writing for the movie that was Thursday? Because if you think about it, Sweep against Sam Houston, which perfects SFA royalty, right? The the celebration, the recognition, the powerful words that you spoke after the game. Could you have written that night any better when it comes to SFA volleyball? Yeah, it was it was fun, you know, and I um, am certainly humbled and honored by all of that. And just to have the opportunity to share that with the home crowd and just experience all the support um, it, that there was for the program as a whole. It's just, uh, it's been wonderful. And the crowds, like you mentioned, the crowds have been super supportive of what's going on with this team. And uh, this is a team to get excited about. All right, open it up to the local media and then to the SFA media. Someone here was talking about, you have a 20 game winning streak. I'm not going to take credit for knowing it. Someone had, said you have a 20 game winning streak at home. So what does that mean to you to be able to hold, you know, keep going and keep winning at home? Well, winning at home is something that's important. Uh, I have no idea until you tell me stuff like that, that we have a, some kind of winning streak going at home. But I do know that uh, Shelton Gym has been a wonderful place for us, and it's, it's uh, you know, a great place to play volleyball. It's a very tight feel of a venue. Uh, the crowds that come in between the students and the local community, it just makes it a real loud, intimidating place. So... It's uh, something, when we go out there, we definitely want to protect the home turf, no doubt about that. So, And I think those the win streak is just a byproduct of all of that. So, and obviously, I know, like, just in sports in general, as you go through the grind of you know, the day-to-day -day stuff, you know, sometimes it can be harder to have fun with it. So, like, how are you able to, like, have the success but then also have fun with it? Yeah, you know, you have to take a step back at times and remind yourself why you're doing this. Um, you know, I think it was it was a week or two ago. I mean, all the weeks run together, all the days run together. But uh, we stopped and we were talking to the girls. It's like, give me one reason. What's the number one reason why you play college volleyball? And just force them to take a deep breath and really go back and remember why they're doing this. And it's like, hang on to that, you know, hang on to that one thing. Because it does. It gets tough, and you get into a long season, and you're traveling, and then schoolwork piles up, and you're tired, and you got to go to practice, and it's just one thing after another. So um, being able to keep it all in perspective is extremely important. Awesome. Uh, just basically, Coach, if you would talk about uh, the excitement that uh, you and the team are feeling uh, going up uh, into, uh, in, into the next match, your next opponent. Yeah, I mean, again, another Power 5 opponent. We get uh, This is one that's ranked in the top 25 in Baylor. So an opportunity to test ourselves against one of the best teams in the country and an opportunity to put on a little better showing than we did in the NCAA tournament. You know, we just we want to be prepared for what that kind of competition is going to bring and not wait till NCAA tournament time to... You know, so that's why we've played a tougher schedule this fall. And, you know, Baylor, they're really, really good. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be uh, quite a challenge, but one we're excited about. Thank you. Coach, we, we talked about the big crowd that was there on Thursday. There was a pretty big crowd there for the Ole Miss match as well. <coughs> um, wh where does this weekend rank for you? In, in your time here at SFA, I mean, beating Sam Houston on Thursday, having an SEC school here, uh, on Saturday, just where, where does that rank for you as, as the coach here at SFA? You know, I've, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question because 
honestly, each season's kind of its own thing, and there have been some great moments. There have been lots of great moments. So to rank it anywhere among all the, the great teams and great experiences that we've had, I don't know that I can do that. But I can tell you we had a, little, a lot of fun from Thursday to Saturday, and the crowds were wonderful. The experience, the excitement around volleyball was there. And we're, I know can tell you that we're playing some very high-level volleyball right now. I talked to multiple people this weekend, uh, for folks from Tulsa and from Ole Miss, and the the common theme was none of them were real excited to play against SFA <laughs> volleyball. Um, what does that mean to you that th- that this program has that type of reputation? You know, being a you know we're a smaller conference, we're a small, and we're playing these Power Five schools and Group of Five schools. What, what does that mean? you know, for this program to have that kind of reputation? Well, it's good, but I'll be honest with you, it makes scheduling extremely difficult. It is hard for us to fill a schedule. It's hard to get people to come in here. Everybody wants us to go play them at their place. But that says something for what our fans have created in Shelton Gym and just that atmosphere. So, um, you know, it's good that we have, I guess it's good that we have that problem, but, uh, but it, is, it is a challenge year in and year out. <laughs> so one of the big performances this weekend was Elon Bradley, again, <laughs> once again leading the team in, in kills in basically every match, including the Tulsa game. She had 25 kills, a career high for her, and no errors in that match. Can you speak to what she did this weekend? Yeah, I mean, we all know what Elon's capable of, and it's taken her just a little while to get going this fall, but we knew it would happen, and it certainly has the last couple weeks. She's really started to started to get things going, and, you know, just what she can do physically, and she's getting that just that volleyball IQ is getting better and better every match. And, um, you know, if we can just keep her healthy and keep her moving forward— um, you know, I, I kind of joked the other day that her getting 25 kills doesn't surprise me in the least. I'm honestly surprised that she's never done it before because she gets a lot of kills. But the fact that she did it with no errors, now that's the surprise. But, uh, no, she's gotten so good at managing her errors and knowing when to swing and when to just put the ball in play and making better decisions. And I just really look forward to seeing her progress over the remainder of her senior year. And we talk about the offense a lot, but our defense has been (laughs) very excellent this year. You've got the tied for first in the NCAA in total team blocks with 134 and a half. And then you've got Isabella Ortiz that's ranked fifth in the nation with 66 blocks. Can you just speak to what what you're seeing from that front line? Yeah, honestly, defensively, we've come along faster than we have offensively, and that's pretty normal. But uh, after the first weekend, we... We made some made some things very clear. Defense is all about effort, and it's all about just all-out pursuit. And after the first weekend, we've ju- that has just been getting better and better. So hopefully, and that starts up at the net. So it starts with that blocking presence. So hopefully that will continue. And defense is only the only real reason to play defense though is so you can get good offensive opportunities because we could dig balls all day but if we're not going to turn those into good swings they didn't really do us any good so turning that defense into really good offense is what we're going to continue working on i know you're focused on baylor for tomorrow but now we're we're opening our conference slate against utrgb on saturday can you speak to what you see in that matchup yeah we're i mean (laughs) It's whack time, right? It's whack time. And every night the it's every night is like playing your rival. So uh, you've got to be prepared, you've got to show up, you've got to be mentally sharp, you've got to be physically sharp, and you have to be the ones that are kind of in attack mode is kind of how I like to put it. You can't just sit back and let the other team dictate how things are going to go. You've got to be the aggressor from the very first whistle. So that fun starts on uh, Saturday afternoon and then again on Monday of next week, which is a, a weird match time for us or match day. But in WAC play this year, when you play your travel partner, those games are happening on Monday. 
and UTA as our travel partner will end up getting two Mondays this year. So, uh, yeah, we'll get through Baylor Tuesday night and uh, take the day off Wednesday and then Thursday, turn our focus to the WAC schedule. Got two random ones to end this. Um, he'll probably get mad at me for even mentioning him, but SFA Volleyblog, Greg Miller, um, you mentioned Monday. It's going to be an interesting day for him. He's going to be teaching class <laughs> on top of dealing with picking up his kids from school. And then that night, after dealing with his class load, he'll be commentating on ESPN+. Plus. But he's been hugely receptive and been huge for the program for all of these years. Um, talk a little bit about the special dynamic, especially with his crossroads between being on the academic side of the university as well as the athletic side. Yeah, we're really fortunate to have somebody like Greg. I mean, he loves the sport of volleyball. He loves statistics. You know, he's a stats professor, so he's all things stats. So that's why he pulls out these weird stats and shares them with me. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I had no idea. But, uh, you know, just his friendship and his... Just, he just he gives his all to this program as much as the players, the coaches, everything else. And he's doing it with a full-time job on the side. You know, he's got his full-time job, and this is his little side gig. But he's, uh, he's been wonderful to help grow our sport and the visibility of our sport at SFA. And just the fact that we're getting our games – Either they're either on TV or they're on the radio, one or the other, every single night. So we certainly appreciate everything that he's done to grow SFA volleyball across the nation. And today's the special celebration for SFA. Happy birthday, SFA! Yes. Anything else you want to say about the university that I mean, you've you've I haven't been here for all of it. Let's make that very clear. I have not been here for all, but I have been here for a good chunk of those years. Not even half, but uh, have been here for a chunk of those years, and this place has been uh, wonderful to me and given me many opportunities, you know, to grow my career. And just it became home in the midst of starting a career here SFA and Nacogdoches has become home. Well, enjoy the birthday celebration, but also good luck on the road. And then it's whack time. It is we'll whack see you time. Back in, uh, the pressure cooker, Shelton Gym, six o'clock on Saturday. Thanks for your time, Coach. Noon on Saturday. Or noon on Saturday. Noon.